Hi guys, I get asked quite a lot about how I make my videos, what programs I use, what settings and so on and I thought I would do a video showing you more or less everything I use, how I use it, how I put my videos together and so on. If you are not interested in how it all gets put together, this video is definitely not for you. This this is really aimed at people who want to do their own video editing and have seen my videos and want to know how I achieve whatever it is they think I'm achieving, quality um, and so on. Now you are currently looking at my very clean desktop. Um, and you can see a few games I've got here and you'll also notice I can scroll. Uh, the same is true of these things here. This desktop is using a program called Fences and Fences is a way to group icons into little boxes. You can see there's all my games and I can sort of close that box a little and I can scroll and choose it and it keeps, it keeps the desktop neat. So for example my Fallout 3 all my Fallout 3 modding stuff comes in here. I've got my Fallout 3 data folder, the GEC, FO3 edit, um, and I normally just use this to go to things. And the same is true of my Fallout New Vegas, which apparently is not, do I not have anything else in Fallout New Vegas? Apparently I don't at the moment. Mind you, it's been a long time since I have modded Fallout New Vegas. Uh, Skyrim, same thing. If I double click here, the rest of my desktop reappears. You'll notice there's another panel here, there's a panel down here, a panel down here, and a lot of random icons. Uh, this this is where I'm just, you know, I'll be, I'll be editing stuff. This is a thumbnail I made for one of the videos. Uh, these are a few files I've downloaded. And it makes the, the, the overall desktop a mess. So I use fences, I double click, and when I show you guys things, oh, this is how I install. I've got a nice clean desktop, so I'll have my browser open, uh, maybe the Nexus Mod Manager, and you will see only this. But of course, what are you? You're going to want to know what I am recording my desktop with. Well, I'm not going to show you what I'm recording the desktop with right now because I'm using something different just for this video, and I will explain later. Usually, I use a program called Debut Video Capture Software. So I open that up, this is a debut, and you can already see it's already looking at the window. It's already looking at the desktop. Um, and all of these programs here are programs I use for video editing and recording. Once I've got this open, usually what I do is then double click here, and now I've got everything clear, but I've got debut recording my desktop. To record, I can either press the, I set it for F10, I believe, or I can click this button and it will start recording the video. Um, and I always use MP4. The encoder options I use are H264, the default. Uh, this is the same codec used by YouTube. It's not the greatest codec in the world, but it's it's perfect for desktop. Your desktop is actually very easy to encode because it's very, very static. And so when I record with this codec, it is pretty much crystal clear, pixel perfect. You won't, you won't see any degradation. So this is fine for that. If I press record now, it is now recording the desktop. You can't actually see it, although you can see debut professional down below. So I know, and because it's red, I know it's recording. If I open that up, and stop it. It is no longer recording. And if I want, I can actually open the recordings directly from here and have a look at them or delete them if I decide I don't need them. I don't need this one. So that's how I record the desktop. So if I'm showing you how to install a mod, the chances are it is debut professional that I am using. You will probably notice in most of my videos when I'm showing you how to record this program down here with red, meaning it's recording. So that's how I do that. And of course, that's how I uh, record the desktop. How do I record games? Well, one of the first programs I ever used for recording games for Skyrim Mod Sanctuary was Fraps. And this is actually still a very good program and I use it for benchmarking and recording small clips. It's a little heavier than some of the other programs I use in that it drops your, your frame rate a little more than some of the others. It does record very high quality, but it lacks a few features that I really need when recording 
for my Let's Plays. But for, for Skyrim Mod Sanctuary, for that type of video, no problem. Basically, if I'm not recording my own voice at the same time, if I record the voice afterwards, I can use Fraps without any problems. Um, for the movies, I, I record the Windows sound, I record at 30 frames a second, and I record them directly to an SSD. I, I record them to solid state discs just to make sure I don't lose anything. And it's pretty much uncompressed. It takes quite a lot of space to record using this program. Now you can actually record um, a microphone. So for example, if I do record external input and it's, it's defaulting now to the creative uh, microphone that's currently attached to that. I actually have several microphones, but on my gaming machine currently, that's the only one I have plugged in. What you're listening to me, uh, me with now is actually a um, microphone called the Rode Podcaster. And that's on a completely different machine and I will explain how I'm doing that in a little while. The problem with recording the microphone as well as the video sound is that it records it all to one track. And that can be an issue. I will explain more in a little while. And that brings us to DX Torrey. Now, DX Torrey was the workhorse recorder program I used basically for most of the Let's Play videos um, until I started using hardware recording. It's a great program. It really is very, very powerful indeed. Um, it, it takes a little less performance than Fraps, which is good. It has far more options. You can use a lot of different codecs for recording. You can control how many um, cores it uses. You can you can do a whole a whole heap of things that you cannot do on Fraps. Um, so, for example, you can also set up multiple hard drives to record to. When you record uncompressed high definition video it requires a huge amount of space. But more importantly, it requires that your hard disk can, can handle the sheer volume of data it's, it's being thrown at it. Um, with this program, with DxTori, you can actually have multiple drives set up and it will record to all three at the same time as if you had a RAID drive, which of course means that your disks are recording faster, which is great. Not that useful for me because I'm using SSD disks, um, not really disks, but I'm using SSDs and they have a write speed that is, as you can see, 241 megabits per second, which is easily enough to record um, 1080p 60 frames a second in the codec I, I use. So, but still, it's nice to have that option. The video options, there, there are loads of them. It's really, it really is a very, very nice program for that. Um, I, can, I can record in X264 if you want really small files. So if you don't have a fast drive, that's what you should do. Use, use a codec like that. But lossless codecs are better because you're less likely to get those little moments where you just get some corruption or the, the, the encoding process just for some reason just put a glitch in and you can't get rid of it afterwards. I like lossless uh, recording. I then compress later on when time is not an issue. Uh, the other thing that's great about DX Torrey is it has the option to record multiple sound sources. You can actually have as many as you like. So for example, I've got the Sound Blaster Titanium recording on channel one. Channel two, I can, for example, have the microphone and I can keep adding them. So if I have three or four microphones, and, and sometimes I do, I can actually record myself on different microphones. And you might wonder why you would do that, but every now and again, if you get too close to your main microphone, you might get some distortion. And if you've recorded on a second microphone, you could use that track for a brief amount of time. It might not be quite as high quality, but if it doesn't have a di distortion. Um, that might seem super crazy, but sometimes it can be useful. I actually don't use that for my Let's Play videos. Um, I use two channels um, and hope I don't mess <laughs> the, uh, the microphone up too much. Oh, the video codec settings I use when recording, I use the Lagarith lossless codec. Um, you can download that online. It is an exceptionally good codec. 
it is completely lossless as far as I can tell. Everything looks exactly the way it looks when I play. And the file size is big, but not as big as it could be. Um, it's still big. I mean, you know, two or three gigabytes per minute. It's still big, but it's very, very good quality. No loss whatsoever. Very good for recording. Obviously, you do not want to upload to YouTube directly in that codec. It will take forever. One hour of footage is going to be, you know, um, <laughs> so, I know, 200 gig of file. You do not want to upload that to YouTube. I'm not sure YouTube will be happy with that either. Um, the, the settings I use are YV12 for the mode and I use multi-threading. And for all I know, that's not the best settings, but it worked perfectly for me. And I use this codec with these settings on any recording program that will allow me. That's DxTori, Bandicam, so on. So great codec, download it, use it. Now, um, DxTori is not always perfect uh, for all games. There are some games that DxTori just does not like very much. Believe it or not, Skyrim is one that gives DxTori a little bit of trouble if you don't record at 60 frames a second, or at least for me. If I record at 30 frames a second, DxTori tends to cause very, very, very minor stutters in the game. And I actually believe that it's having trouble handling the cap. So although it's recording at 30 and supposed to be playing at 60, I think sometimes it's recording at 30 and playing at 30, and it's switching between the two, even though it's reporting that it's doing 60. Not totally sure, but it does have some issues. Um, the same is true on Amnesia. I did an Amnesia Let's Play. I could not get DxTori to get very good results, so I ended up using Fraps for that game. And there was an issue with doing that in that I had the microphone and the game sound on one channel. Again, I will explain why that's a, a little bit of an issue, but it did mean that I had to do a lot of tweaking in advance to get the recording volume of my voice correct with the game sound. Okay, well that's that's one program for recording the messy desktop, two for recording games, but I've still got one more program and well maybe even two actually to show you on the recording side because now I no longer record using the software options that I've just shown you. Um, if, if you're looking at my desktop now, I am not using Debu to record, and obviously I'm not using DxTori or Fraps. So how am I recording this? Well, just let me switch machines. Okay, so here we are on my video machine. Now my video machine is a completely separate machine to my gaming rig. A totally separate machine, it is, in fact, my old gaming rig, but with a slightly weaker graphics card. I'm using a 660, I believe. Yes, I believe a 660. No, actually, I think it's even weak. I think it's a 620. It's, it's a very, very weak graphics card because it just doesn't need one. What this machine needs is a good CPU and a hell of a lot of good hard drives, which is what it's got. It also has something called the Other Media Live Gamer HD card, and this is a card that does nothing but record video and audio input from my gaming machine. If you see here, this window called RE Central is a program that is currently showing you what is on my game rig. And just in case you're one, you think this is a picture, it is not a picture, I will, I will go to my gaming rig and move the mouse and you can see the mouse move. If I start a game up, for example, Borderlands and Start it up, it will, it will start playing quite loudly, actually. Let me skip this. And there you go. So it's now looking at Borderlands on my gaming machine. And where I'm sitting, I'm actually looking at two screens. One of them shows this, the Borderlands game, and the other one shows what you're looking at now. A machine looking at the machine playing Borderlands 2. Yeah, there you go. Now, of course, the obvious question is why? Why on earth are you using hardware to record when you've got software that will do the same? And the answer is mostly for performance. The performance drop when recording using software is noticeable. 
if you're getting 60 frames a second uh, uh, playing and you start recording, it will probably drop to about 40, maybe even lower. It, it completely depends what the problem is. If, if you're being held up by your CPU, chances are the performance drop will be even more when recording because the recording uses the CPU a lot. If you're limited on by your graphics card, it won't have as big effect, but it will still have an effect. Whereas the hardware, well, it has a minimal um, effect. And the reason for that is what my game machine is currently doing is it's currently sending the same image to two monitors. One monitor is the gaming monitor that I watch, and the other one is actually the machine, the, the video machine, which it is treating like a monitor. And if you tell your machine to clone the image, the difference in performance is almost negligible. This means when I record the game, I don't notice any performance problems whatsoever, nothing. It's absolutely brilliant, and I cannot tell you how nice it is to play when doing a let's play, record 1080p and have, you know, really good frame rate. So it's really fluid. Um, it really helps me keep immersed in the game. And for me, it really was well worth setting this up. But it's not all sunshine and smiles. <laughs> it took a lot of work getting the hardware to work. Because this program, RD Central, you know, the program that comes with the Avamedia Live Gamer card, records only in one codec. And it is a codec that has a lot of loss. Even on the highest settings, the picture quality is nowhere near as good as the picture quality that I get when recording with DX Tori on a lossless codec. And I tried all sorts of programs. I tried XSplit. I tried several different things um, and had very little joy. XSplit was pretty good, but it, it you have to record in the X264 codec, which is very good, but unfortunately does require the CPU to go into overdrive and occasionally did have artifacting or color distortion, purely because of the encoding process. So I wanted to record in pure, uncompressed, preferably something like the logarithmic codec. It took me ages to figure out a way of doing this, <laughs> but in actual fact, I, it, I sort of, I wouldn't say I brutally hacked it together, but I am using um, an odd mixture to do it. As you can see, I've got Bandicam installed. Now, Bandicam is a program that's similar to Fraps and DxTory. I would say it sits between them in, in regards how powerful it is. DX Tori is still more powerful, uh, but Bandicam is more powerful than Fraps. And it does allow me to record dual audio to different tracks. That's the main thing. I can record audio to two tracks. And Bandicam will record non-game windows. DX Tori will not do that. DX Tori will only record the game window itself. It cannot record this window. Now, Bandicam can. So I can have my game playing like this, and then I can maximize the screen. And now Bandicam can record in 1080p. And so that's it. Basically, what I'll be doing is I'll be maximizing this, recording with Bandicam whilst I play on the other machine. And I actually keep both monitors open, one for the gameplay. That's the one that sits in front of me, and I'm playing on that the whole time. And I, I keep this monitor, the one you're seeing me wiggle the mouse around on, I keep that open as well, and I do that so I can see how it's recording, just in case something happens to the recording. I have had the odd time where the recording suddenly stops or starts going into one frame a second. So I want to keep my eye on it. So I keep this one open. Now, believe it or not, there are still more issues with this. <laughs> I know, kind of strange. Let me close this. When I normally come to this, when I try starting the, get the recording up, I have to set these settings and then I hit ready and it starts recording here. 
The problem is, is there is often a problem with the audio sound and I won't know unless I can check. So what I have to do is I do this, I then go take my headphones off, run over to the gaming machine, put the headphones that are connected to that and make sure I can hear the sound playing from this. If I can't, I have to close this down, go back, change one of these settings. I have to change it. If I don't change it, nothing happens. I change it, hit ready again, stop, go back, change it back to audio in, and then off I go. If I do that, if I do that, the whole process will uh, initialize, initialize the sound, and I'm now recording the sound, um, mostly. There's still an issue with the sound. Yep, still more to go. Okay, so after all of that, I'm now ready to start recording. I've got everything set up. Um, I start the game up. I open this window and I get ready to maximize it and then start recording. So I've now got the program maximized and I am recording with Bandicam. And I run around and I do a bit of playing. I, you know, chat, shoot things, kill things, lots of combat. Lots of fun, yada, yada, yada. Um, and what I will do is I'm, I might well play for about an hour, hour and 20 minutes, but I will sometimes cut it out. So for example, if I'm running along and I realize for the last, I don't know, 20 seconds I've not really said anything, what I will do is I will stop the recording and almost immediately start it again. And the reason I've done that is because it gives, it stops the video and has a separate file. So where I stopped, it lets me know I was probably being boring. I was probably just running along, humming and harring, not saying anything, had nothing to say. And I will, I will then continue on my way and I'll be recording, but you might not see it because what will happen is nothing. <laughs> nothing will happen and then suddenly something will jump out and I'll start shooting. And what I'll do when I'm recording is I will cut out all the bits where I was doing nothing. But that break helps me uh, find it, helps me and reminds me so I don't leave long sessions where there's absolutely nothing going on. The same is true when I'm doing inventory management. So if I'm trying to figure out which thing to drop and I've been here for an hour and a half, um, this is actually also a great place if, if I need to go get a coffee or, you know, don't go to the toilet. I can go here. I'm going to stop the video and start it again. And I can usually merge that in without you ever knowing, which is good because that means it, it keeps the, I don't know what you call it, the, the suspension of reality. What's the word? The immersion. But there's another word for it. There's another way of describing it. Anyway, <laughs> um, you, you get what I'm saying. So it makes it feel like it's flowing. Um, so that, that's what I'll do. And I'll have some games, sometimes I'll have the entire recording in one shot. But usually there'll be about six or seven videos. Um, you know, each about 20, 20 minutes each. And a lot of it's boring and not stuff you guys need to see. And I will cut it out. Um, and then I'll I'll get to the end, I'll get some cool place, and I'll stop. I'll save the game and hope it doesn't crash, and I'm done. I've got all the video footage. Okay, so I've got all of the, the footage made. I've played the game, I've got the video footage. Now I need to edit it, uh, make it look good, add titles, so on, and then render it and upload it to YouTube. But there's quite a bit there's quite a bit left to do actually. So, I actually have a lot of pre-made templates for the program I use. I use Sony Vegas, the Vegas Movie Studio HD 11. And I'm going to use my Let's Play Fallout 3 template. Okay, once the project loads up, what I usually do is immediately save it as something new. So let's just do Let's Play Test, LP Test. Let's play Fallout 3 part and then test. 
So I've done that. I've now got a whole new project. Project settings, if you are interested. Properties, 1080p, 30 frames a second. It defaults to 29.970. I like 30. I don't know what difference it makes when uploading to YouTube. Uh, but those are my video settings and those are my audio settings as you can see 44.1k sample rate 16-bit um, i'm not totally sure if there's any point going higher than this when uploading to youtube there is you know i this it for me is good enough uh, best rendering quality no deinterlace so that is my that's my project settings and I will come here and as you can see I've already got some uh, labels made I can change those so it's not part 47 this is part test and I'll edit this one to be you know um, will test I guess for you. Oh, dear oh dear and so on so that's how I start off I get my new my new project up, running, and started. But now I need to get the video from earlier. Now, all of my machines are actually connected together. I actually can use this one. They're all connected together. If you look at my computer here, the local disks, see, that is my operating system and my games SSD. Excuse me, my games SSD. These are the only two disks on my gaming rig. Um, I have a 500 gigabyte gaming hard drive. Every other hard drive I use is on the network. For my video machine, my video machine has uh, it has two raw drives, raw one and raw two. They are 200 plus gigabyte SSD disks. Those are the disks I record to. The AVI video. This is where I store them once I've recorded. So, so I transfer them from there to there, or to a RAID network storage I've got, which is three terabytes. So I've got a lot of storage space and I need it because these files are big. Now, the three files I made, I, am fi I can find here in raw two. And as you can see, two gigabyte, three gigabyte, 2.5. 42 seconds, one minute. The total video I took whilst in game was three minutes. The total size, almost seven gigabytes it gives you an idea of how much space i need over two gigabytes per minute of video recorded so i get those and i drag those onto the project and ordinarily i will almost immediately save because sony vegas is somewhat somewhat unstable i then drag the three files onto my project. Now what happens now is it starts to build all of the references to, as you can see, all the sound information appearing. This is where it should become a little more obvious as to why it is useful that the video sound and the voice sound are separate channels. As you can see, this is the game sound. This is my voice. Different channels. So if I play this now, a bit of play I can now mute my, you know, chat, me. Shoot thing. There's me muted. This time I'll do the opposite. There's me. My, you know, chat, and I will now mute things, the game sound. Completely separate. Lots of so this fun. means I can decide things, I'm going to turn things. the game volume up. And obviously you can't hear it. You can't hear it, it's way too loud, so I can adjust it. Now, I normally have it at about a little bit of increased over what I record. Lots of combat. But as you can hear there, you can't hear my voice over the sounds of the gunshots. Now, because I've got them on separate sound, what I can actually do is I can cut the video here and here, and then drop this sound. Kill things, lots of combat. And then if I really want lots to, I can merge it so it merges a little yeah, neater. Yeah. So, um, and what? Shoot things, kill things, lots of combat, lots of fun. So as you can see, the game volume's gone back to full, so you can hear the ambient sound. 
yada, yada, yada. But I turned it down because I noticed I was talking during a fight, which is a bad idea. Let me just uh, remove all those changes. So as you can see, this is, this is a huge advantage when you've got the two tracks um, set differently. Okay, first thing I do, if these are my three clips, I right click on them, I go to properties, I disable resample, okay. And I do that for all three. This, if you are using Sony Vegas, do that. Do that and then save. Any clips you use, just right click, disable resample. If you've ever used Sony Vegas and you've made your videos and they have a, a slight blurry ghost look and they don't look quite high quality and you see people who've got much higher quality videos and they say they use Sony Vegas and they use the same render settings, chances are that's your problem. The worst thing about this, I cannot tell it to default to this, which is, which is atrocious, at least I have not figured out how to do it. But if you've not been doing that, do that, I guarantee I don't guarantee, but I, I, am, I reckon there's a 99% chance your videos will look a lot better almost immediately. You'd be amazed how much difference that makes. Then the next thing is the sound. This is before I even start clipping all these together and start doing my editing, the sound. Now, why? One big problem with recording the hardware the way I do is the sound is never in sync with the video. Never. It's going to be difficult for you to see. Lots of fun actually, it's not that bad, actually. It is not Lots that bad. Fun. Sometimes it's better than other times. Start shooting. And what I'll do when I'm recording, yeah, something will jump out and I'll start shooting. No, it is. It's slightly off. It is slightly off. You can see it there. Start shooting. And what I'll do... Now, and what's even worse is <laughs> I'm recording me doing this, I'm recording on the hardware system. So this sound's going to be out of sync. So I'm going to have to resync the audio here and then resync the audio of me resyncing the audio. If that doesn't blow your mind, I have no idea what will. Right, so I take this one first. And the way I do this is I have to um, right click on the sound, go to group, remove from, and then I need to step frame by frame until I see the shot. You see the shot? There. That is the beginning of the shot. And then what I do is I zoom in on where the shot sound and I have to sort of guess sometimes because sometimes I'll be using um, bullet time and there will be a, a raise of sound as I go into bullet time. But it's usually fairly obvious where the beginning of the shot is. So I move the first frame to the start of the sound. You should see the flash more or less the same time as the sound. It does take slightly longer for sound to travel than light. I am not sure one meter or half a meter as it is, is going to make a huge amount of difference. So the chances are the sound should actually start more like there so that the sound appears with the, but to be honest, if it's one or two frames out, no one will notice. It's really hard. So now I've got it better lined up, I think. Lots of combat. Lots of fun. And I can double check it again. Just go back. There you go. The shot has started. And as you can see, so has the sound. Um, it, again, it's, it's not, you don't have to be perfect because it's really hard to see it in game, especially when you use bullet time because the audio is slightly drawn out anyway. But I need to do that. Then once I've done that, once I think I've got it right, I select all three once more, group, create new. I've now relinked them. So if I move them around, if I move this one, the sound moves with it. That's useful. Um, and hopefully now all yeah, of the sounds, with all of the sounds are synced as well. Now, what I'll generally do next is I'll zoom in here and you see this gap. What I do is group, remove from, move across, group, create new. I've just moved this file across the same amount I moved that one. I can't guarantee that's going to work. I then have to double check anyway, but it's, it's usually a good starting point. So let's have a look at the guns here. Frame, 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 frame. So as you can see, it's not perfect. There's the bullet. This one's not as bad. So I'm going to remove that and tweak it a little bit. 
Each recording, it's a good idea to do this. Each bit of video. And in fact, if you've got a video that's more than, I don't know, half an hour long, you may have to split the audio a tiny bit and move it all. It depends how it syncs. It usually syncs the entire clip the same distance away from reality, but sometimes it doesn't. So you have to do this. You have to keep checking on key points. There you go. Bang. So hopefully that one is now set correctly and so on. Now, it's not always easy to do this because if you haven't shot anything, but another way to do it is to handle it based upon the uh, the buttons clicked. So the VATS, for example. Um, knowing, which is good because... I don't actually press any buttons in this video, do I? No, I didn't. Um, but the, the buttons will click. They're not as visible sound, actually. They are not as visible, um, but you, you can still do it. You can still sync it up. And let's have a look at this one. There were no, sh there was no shooting in. Oh, wait a minute. Start shooting. And what I'll do, start shooting. And what I'll do, now, and I'll start. Was there a bullet earlier? There was. See, I got it wrong. And this is why you have to check it. Usually, you'll find you've had to move the audio to the left, not the right. So that, w the reason I noticed this is because when I went here, this audio has been moved that way. That almost never happens, just the way I record. So I've done it wrong. I've missed one shot. First shot there, there's the first shot. I'm li I've been linking it with the second shot. That makes more sense. Let's have a look. How does that match to that one? That matches that one a little better. Let's see if we've got it. Something will jump out and I'll start shooting. And what yep. I'll do when I'm recording now, is I will cut out excuse all me. the bits while I was doing nothing. But that break... That's me talking in video. Um. Anyway, I, I'm not going to get it perfect now. But as you can see, this is what I have to go through just to make sure the audio is um, synced. And that is important because it will annoy the hell out of you if the gunshots are always half a second behind or ahead of what you see. It really can get very annoying. So now I've got the audio sorted, what I will then do is double check. For example, on the sound effects, if I go to the track effects, I use a track compressor and the settings I use, if you are interested, are threshold minus 12, amount 3, Attack 10, release 250. You can look up on the internet what those do, but essentially what it's looking at is it's looking at the sound, and if the sound goes above this, it starts to reduce it. This means the game sound will, generally speaking, get lowered. So here, things kill things, lots of combat. That sound, believe it or not, was damp, dampened by the video. If you listen to it in game, it is far higher. But for videos, that it really it it can really be upsetting. If you're watching a video, you've got it set on high so you can hear all the ambient sound. Then a gunshot rings out and it blows your eardrums out. Um, this helps with that. It tries to equalize the game sound a little bit by removing the really big explosions and gunshots and making them a little duller. Um, for voice, I do something similar actually, but far lower settings. Those are the settings, and you'll also notice I use auto gain compensation. This means if I start shouting, or if I start talking quieter, the chances are it will it will even out a little bit better, so you don't get you don't get those spikes. One last thing for the sound on voice: if you are using a cheap microphone, you may find you hear a kind of very muddy sound. It sounds a little muffled. Um, that could be the bass. A lot of microphones do not do the bass tones very well at all. I'm no expert on this, but I'm following the advice of another YouTuber called Miracle of Sound on all of these things, actually, Track Compressor and Track EQ, and some other YouTube um, people who've sent me messages, who've sent me tons of information about this. Thanks, by the way, for all that. Um, it can be useful to drop on your, your equalizer to drop the lower end like so. 
um, I set it all the way down at about, you can do 150, 120, I think at least 80. You, you need to play with these values. I think with my old mic, I used to use about 120 um, all the way at the bottom, so it was minus infinity, um, and that would make the microphone sound a lot better. My new microphone has no such problem because it is a studio mic and or studio quality mic, so I don't need it. But just in case, if you're using a cheap microphone, play around with that. That can really help. Video settings, I don't do much with the video settings. I add a slight amount of brightness, about 4%, maybe 5%. That is, that is only because when you render something for YouTube, it always looks a little... Well, it doesn't look darker, but it's always harder to see things because the quality isn't as good as you would in-game. In-game, things are sharper, so when things are a little duller, you can still see them clearly. I find 4% still lets the sky look the same, still makes the game look good, but in dark areas, you don't have as much problems. You could go through clip at a time and specifically do dark areas only if you want. And I would recommend doing that if you have noticed when playing some really dark areas where you had trouble seeing, because I guarantee people watching the video will not be able to see it. But otherwise, tiny tweak. Some people play with contrast. You can actually play with the values quite a lot, add saturation, color effects. You, you can actually make the, game, you make the game look like you're using EMB and so on, if you want, from these settings. But I don't do that. I want it to look the way it looks when I play. So finally, we've got all the settings. Now it's time to edit. As you can see, the sound and the video are slightly off. I don't really care at the beginning. I fade it in a tiny bit. I usually have the oh, the music playing. Oh, and I want, yeah, the video fades in from this. So, so and you'll notice here the music, I've got it on separate clips. I've got it split and a volume reduction on this. So as it passes here, so the volume drops just as I start to talk. And that's how I do it. And usually, you know, and we're back <laughs> right about there. So there's that one. I then go along to the next one. And then I'll usually straighten it up. I'll straighten it up. This is where I've stopped because of something boring. I'll find the last place I was talking. And you can see it here. You can see the last place I was talking. And then I'll do the same here. See, I'll, I can see where I started talking. Then I'll tie them in. And almost oh, that was a bit too much. It was a bit too abrupt. And the reason I've done that so there you go. Let's is we stop the recording and almost immediately. So probably could do a better job of that. But that gives you the idea of what I do. I'll be running through the wasteland and you'll see this. And, and I'll be five minutes down the road. And that's that's why I've done all that. And here was the one where I actually went off to the toilet and was hoping you wouldn't notice. So what I do is I tidy it up. Now this is sometimes this sometimes takes a little bit more effort. Because as you can see, can there was that in without you ever there was a knowing, tiny bit. Which is good. The video and start it again. See, you, you'd have to be looking very, very, very carefully. The video and there you start go. It again. You you can almost not see the change. Um, and but in reality, I've run off, the video grabbed a drink, call a nature, so on, come back and carried on, or answered my phone, or, or that type of thing. So you say, there you go, tricks of the trade. You're never gonna. Next time I go into to um into the pit boy, you're not gonna trust me. You're gonna be like, did did you go away? Did you did you leave? You know you are. And then end of the video. Um, what I like to do at the end of these videos is I like to end with the music and I like to end with a um, to be continued. So and I'm done. I've got all the video. So and what I like to do is finish it and I split the video like this and then I black the video out. And this is just my own personal uh, like and style, but not the sound. I'll fade the sound slightly. So I'll get this. I'll save the game and hope it doesn't crash. And I'm done. I've got. So there you go. The sound's still on. Video's finished. I, I like that. But you can you can end it any way you want. And then what I'll do is I happen to know this piece of music off by heart. I split it here, and I split it here. Um, and I'm going to move those to 
the end of where I talk. Now the music is, of course, and I'm done. I've got all the video I... A bit too loud while I'm talking, so I drop it. Doesn't crash, and I'm done. I've got all the video I... Maybe too much, maybe too much. The video and then what I do is I fade that in so you get a, a, a more smooth video and fade out the right there. So that'll be the end. So save the game and hope it doesn't crash. And I'm done. I've got all the video and There you go. So that will normally be me, you know, Wills parking himself and going, right, you know, and off we go. We're going to go somewhere else to next episode and I'll end. Or I'll be walking to the sunset or something like that. I, try, I always try and pick something that's a natural stop, a natural end. Um, I like that. For, the, for this type of game, anyway. For, for other games, when I was playing Dishonored or Amnesia, I did smaller chunks and just finished when, when I couldn't play the game anymore in Amnesia because I was usually too terrified. Uh, but with Fallout, Skyrim, I always try and end at a sort of nice point. I now have, let's save this, just in case it crashes, I now have my video, I've, the, the quality's good, the sound's all synced, everything's faded, I've got credits ready to go, then it's time to render. So I will render as, now, the one I actually chose on Sony Vegas, was the Sony AVC MVC. And I believe, if I remember, it was the 60. It was the 60, and I customized it. And the way I customized it was the first thing I did was change it to 30. Oops. Uh, non. The encode method. I changed to render using CPU only. I have massive problems rendering if I let it use the GPU. If it uses the GPU, it's supposed to be faster, but it will crash about 90% of the time for me. So I'd rather it finished than was twice as fast because it takes 10 times longer anyway because it's probably going to crash. It's very annoying. So anyway... That, those are the settings, as you can see. My audio settings are... I could probably change that to 44 because the it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I think I record... I record in 48, actually. I probably should change the audio settings to match. Um, MP4 format. And usually I try to use best, although it does it automatically. It's using the project settings. Um, so it's a good idea to do that one as well. And then... I will render. You can save it if you want. You can save this. Um, how do you save? How do you save the template? Oh, you do it from here. Yeah, you do it from here. You give it a name, save it, and then it'll, as you can see, for me, I have it saved here. And I call it 30 FPS CPU only. And then render. And then it will run off and it will render. And this can take a while for it depends which machine i use i don't this is my game machine and i ordinarily do not use it but my game machine would be pretty fast as well my video rendering machine um see i actually can edit this if i close this down i can edit this on my game machine the way i've just done close it down then go to the, my video machine and open the same project because it's all networked and do the rendering from that machine and then carry on playing. Um, so it's uh, that's actually very, very useful. As you can see, this is going to take 15 minutes for a three-minute movie. In actual fact, a lot of that's down to the... Um, the text it will speed up once it's uh, once it's recalculating as you can see it's already recalculating it's speeding up massively generally a one hour video will take two hours to make but that is if it's a let's play with fairly simple things and after that it's simply a matter of hitting the upload button dragging the file there and uploading the process takes a little while after that not a, not a huge amount of time but it can take a little while you've you've got to edit the description and for example 
If you look at part 47, which is a video that is 41 minutes, I've also split it into smaller parts. And to do that, you can use an editor that comes with YouTube that will automatically split them for you. But you have to do a little bit of work, find the point you're gonna split, move it in, put the details for that, and so on. That probably takes another 10 or 15 minutes. And then you leave that, it does it all by itself. The rendering goes on at YouTube. When it's finished, I go back, add thumbnails, although strictly speaking, they're not needed. I just like them. And I'm done. There you go. That's what that's what it takes to get one of the Let's Play episodes up. Um, so I would estimate that if, if I don't get any crashes and I don't get any problems, the whole process from beginning the recording to editing to uploading and changing the description probably takes about two and a half hours to three hours. That's for, that's for one hour video. The Skyrim Mod Sanctuary videos are much more involved. Those usually can involve anywhere from 100 to 300 different video clips, all mixed together, mixed in multiple channels with lots of music, um, tons of changes, text, the commentary is done separate and so on. Those can actually take in excess of 10 to 20 hours of editing, recording, uploading and so on. And that does not include the research, finding the mods, trying them out and so on. So those actually take a lot more time. But the, the Let's Plays, yeah, I'd say about between two and three hours per episode. All right, guys, that is it. That is how I make my videos. It's probably, I'm probably doing 50,000 things wrong. I am not a professional video maker, uh, not at all. There are probably a lot of video makers out there telling, gonna tell me I'm doing a lot of things wrong. And by all means, yeah, tell me if there's anything I can change to make it better quality or to make the process go faster. Yeah, I would love that. Um, I mean, if anyone knows a way of getting the sound to sync on the capture card, I'd love that because that can take me a lot of time so, um, and anything any advice you guys have got if you are if you are making videos and you've come to me for advice I hope that video basically tells you what I do and how I do you know how I make my videos what codecs I use and so on if I've not if I've missed a detail or you want to know more put a comment below and I'll either answer it or maybe even make a follow-up video if it's something I really shouldn't have missed. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful.